on. Hello, gentlemen. Chris wanted to ask you about Tanner Connor, the thinking and keeping him on the 53. Not, I guess you could have stashed him on IR for the year, but the, the thinking and not doing that. And also, will Tanner and Eric Rowe go on IR? after the 53 is set in a few minutes. So it's a, it's a two or three. It's part. like a 100-part question. Yeah. Right now. Um, I struggle with those. So. <laughs> uh, Tanner uh, did a good job here. Um, you know, we visited with him on a 30 visit in the spring and um, got him in here. And uh, he improved every day. He worked hard. He's a smart kid. Um, you know, he, he's really wants to improve his craft and really wants to, you know, play in the NFL. and. So it's been fun watching him take to the coaching, and, and uh, he's done a great job. And, and so for us, it's um, he'll be back here shortly, so this is not anything where it's IR with him. And um, it was just we felt that um, talent-wise we would have lost him. We had multiple people, other teams, just calling, asking about him. And uh, we think he's got a good future here uh, potentially. Um, so for us, um, we're excited to have him here. Um, Eric Rose was fine. He'll be just like anyone, normal bumps and bruises battling through. Um, but uh, he was out there, did a good job today, you know, working through stuff. So at um, the end of the day, both those guys will be on the active roster and are not being put down. So how did you do that? I, I didn't remember the second question. Yeah, I just kind of blacked out for a second. Yeah. <laughs> and it, uh, Chris is also a fan of players with two first names. <laughs> that works perfectly in line with that, yeah. Uh, was Skyler a no-brainer ultimately? Was he that good in preseason where it didn't even require much thought, guys? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's – yeah, so he played very well. Um, again, another guy that comes in, he just works every day. He went over his teammates um, through his work ethic, and, you know, uh, he went out and balled. And another one, we got calls again, people asking what we were going to do, and, and they're all saying, you know, you guys would be – Stupid to let him go, and there was no thought about us doing no, it. We're on the business of being stupid. <laughs> so, uh, Chris and Mike, it uh, seemed like there was some optimism that Byron would be able to avoid maybe PUV. I'm curious if something changed in putting him on uh, that list. No, it really was just working through the process with him, just letting him, you know, take his time, go through the rehab work, and. Uh, like everything, you have good days and bad days. And but um, he worked hard, did great. Um, it was just we were just being patient, not putting any pressure on him to rush him back. And uh, at the end of the day, we made the decision, talking with him and talking with him today, to you know um, put him down, you know, for the four games because he he was still optimistic about hopefully being here in a couple of weeks. But he didn't want to be fair. He can't rush him out there with this. We just want to make sure he's ready and right when he comes back. Uh, yeah, like everything, we'll be searching the wa waiver wire here tonight and uh, into tomorrow. But um, for us, you know, we feel good about the group we have. Um, so for us right now, that's not a, 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 any, a position right now we feel is critical for us right now. Where do you stand in terms of offensive line? Obviously, you guys kept eight, um, but, you know, how do you feel specifically about tapping down and possibly adding some options in there? I mean, yeah, you need more players than eight, you know, so. Um, but feel feel good about uh, um, where, where Greg's at and uh, that we're excited about that. We're excited about um, the way that our, that our tackles are performing. You, you guys haven't um, got the chance to see um, our Armstead um, as often as we have. feel very good about that and where he's at and really like where, where Austin's at, so. Um, yeah, that, that's just the nature. You know, there's plenty of years that, you know, it, it, your roster kind of dictates. It's less of um, the other guys weren't X, Y, or Z. It's more that um, there was positions of strength that the, the roster itself kind of steered us towards. Chris, this is the year four of the cycle. You know, it's Mike, you had to tear down to, to now. Well, where would you say this roster is? And obviously, in this, the planning, this would be like, when you guys are making a run, do you feel like you have a championship kind of the roster right now? Uh, we feel good about the roster. We were actually talking about that and the guys that have been here, you know, myself, Marvin, Brandon, and um, the scouts, we were actually talking about how difficult the cuts were um, here for us. And um, a couple guys that we were battling on at the end here, you know, and just trying to do the, make the right decisions for the team. So we feel there's some players that, 
got released and will be on NFL rosters, um, which is always a good thing. That wasn't the case here, you know, for a while, but we felt we've been building it up, and uh, we feel good about the roster and, and excited for what it could be in the future. Chris, what's your um, opinion of what you, you've personally seen from Tua since we last visited? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's um, his. It's it's um, being around Mike and watching him. You know, the other day he was in visiting with Mike for you know just a couple hours on an off day, just coming in, spending time. He was downstairs in the training room for like an hour, just hanging out with the trainers, just talking. And um, it's you know just seeing his personality coming and it's, it's you know just how he is and with the team and and stuff. And uh, you know I think his teammates all see it and feel it. And you guys here talk to the guys and um, he's. He's taking steps, and, and with the offense, with Mike and the coaching staff, you know, he's he's very excited. He, he likes the offense. He thinks it fits him, and the players we added. So it's been good watching his growth and, and watching him um, enjoy himself playing football. Chris, kind of touching on what Adam was asking about, you know, level roster. Do you feel, and Mike, you can add to this too. Obviously, I haven't been mentioned a lot. over here, start the show again. <laughs> But do you feel this is one of the better rosters you've put together? How confident are you that the improvements in the last few years have been made to get closer to where you want to get? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do. I mean, obviously, when you add players like Tyreek Hill to the roster and um, Armstead and uh, Cedric Wilson and um, the guys, um, Raheem Mostert stuff, Alec Ingold, I mean, it's uh, some talented players that are, are good players that can um, that are good teammates, too, and guys that – um, know how to win, know what it takes, and just being around. So it's um, we feel like we got a good deep group. We, it's a good mix. We're still fairly young, uh, you know. Like when Ann did her presentation with the media, we were joking about that and asked about how many players have been in an open locker room, you know, and 48 of them have never been in an open locker room before. And uh, so we're still very young, but we feel good about it. And um, but. We feel good about the roster, but again, we'll always, like we do, keep looking and, and improving and trying and get it to where um, we can compete for championships. What did a cater coach show you guys this camp and preseason to this spot? He's a competitor, man, and and that's that's one thing um, that was obvious. It's also obvious to him or to all of us early. Um, there's when the game's not too big for you. You know, that you're, because um, it's hard. You know, you, the jump and level of play is real. Um, but he, um, from the onset, uh, let it be known through his play that that this was not too big of a stage for him. So th those are always the ones that, um, you know, are real pleasant surprises. Um, you'd be, it'd be a farce to say that, that you totally expect it. Um, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, undrafted free agents being able to make that jump so quick. Um, but, you know, you feel good about them. Uh, but you're, you're, you're careful not to uh, um, jump the gun and crown this, that, or the other. you got to just um, throw them to the fire and, and see, see if they, they um, don't burn, I guess. Throw them in the water and don't drown. One of those things. Um, and... But he he's uh, like like the other um, un, or the other rookies that we kept, um, they they uh, made it be known to their teammates early and often that they belong. Um, and that's why they deserve the roster spot they received. Thank what, you, went bro. Into the, what went into the process of keeping Savon and Miles and letting uh, Sony walk? Uh, that process was brutal. It was a good thing for the Miami Dolphins, but um, th that competition was real, uh, and it was just continued ops. Um, that it, there was some game um, game tape invol involvement. It was much more than that. It was just the whole progression from from the onset. So uh, that room was uh, very very healthy in terms of how they they tried to make each other better, but uh, they were competing against each other. But they're also rooting for each other, um, and uh, you know, Sony did not make it easy. Um, but to those guys' credit, uh, you know, one of the things that I that I was um, so impressed with was, I mean, shoot, you can remember like it was yesterday. Whenever we we're signing running backs in the off season, 
um, Miles and S.A. in particular were, uh, how they handled that was not sulking. It was like clockwork. They were outside of, um, uh, on the field with weight vests on working, you know. So um, we feel pr very good about uh, the, the group we were able to assemble. And um, I, I, I think it would be shortchanging all of those guys to not emphasize that it was the group of them competing and, but working together um, that raised those guys' level of play. You know, obviously the on the field stuff saw it the other night too what he can do, but it's behind the scenes which has been even better than we thought. Right. You know, like we'd heard a lot of good things from um, people and friends and coaches that we know in Kansas City, um, but being around here he's got an infectious attitude his competitor um, great teammate with the guys you know um, you guys see him out there and you see him he's he's 100 percent you know 100 miles an hour and <laughs> everything he does and always encouraging people and stuff and so it's been really fun watching him behind the scenes uh, take leadership with the team and help guide the guys in terms of you know pushing everyone to be great because it's easy if you're him you can sit back and <laughs> You know, and coast through this if he wanted to, uh, but that's not him, and that's been fun watching him around. So that's been the biggest surprise for me. Yeah, yeah it, it, you can tell he recognized. You know, who don't really concern ourselves with um, uh, anything, but since he's been here. But one thing I will say is, it was obvious that he recognized the opportunity to where that he is a. a I mean, shoot, he's been a Pro Bowl player every year of his career um, and came to a very young team. And there was uh, an opportunity for him to to take his game to another level with, in terms of leadership and tone setting and all of those things. Um, and, he, and I'm sure he could feel that his teammates were like, wow, this is Tyreek Hill. Um, and when, when he doesn't make it an option, to go full speed, it, it is like if you're on the field, you're full speed, it changes um, the teammates for the better. And I think he's really embracing that. Um, it's been, like, like Chris said, it's been really cool. That's That's been the, the most fun part um, with all of it. Chris, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since the NFL punishment. What was your reaction to the first round pick being lost and the findings of the report? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, appreciate the question. Um, you know, for us, it really doesn't affect how we do business around here. You know, we're just kind of focused on the team right now and moving forward. But, you know, um, you know, the league did their investigation. and um, But at the end of the day, you know, this team's not affected by it, and everyone's just moving forward and focused on trying to win as many games as we can this season. Chris, you had a look at a number of um, – yeah, I think, you know, Trey's familiarity with our, our system and scheme helps. You know, he was with New England, Josh, obviously, and um, those guys. So um, E-Rob and those guys. So he has those guys here on, on the roster. And so um, we're kind of looking for someone with his skill set, the guy that can play you know, all along the line of scrimmage. You know, if his time in New England, he, he could do some rush inside as well too, which is which will help. So, I think his versatility and what he's done. You know, he's still you know 28 years old. You know, um, we understand you know that he's had you know uh, some bad luck with injuries a couple of years, but here he's not asked to come in here and be a star for us. He's come here just to be a good player and, and help us like he is. And and he's a great teammate, good person. Everything we've heard about him is. Uh, from people in New England and Detroit about what kind of character and person he was. So um, excited to add him here. Uh, just us being around him just for a few days. Really, really good dude. Um, so excited to form him and looking forward to see how he fits in the scheme here with our guys. Chris, I think, um, I think one reason why uh, Mike second name has been bandied about by media fans is because obviously he's adjusting to a slightly different position on a one-year contract with a franchise tag. So I was going to ask you, A, was there any trade offer you received that was tempting that you guys discussed? And B, is that still a fluid thing, or have you all decided, both of you decided, we are better with Mike Kosecki, he is on the team for all of 2022? 
Do you ever ask a question that's just like one? one? I know, it overwhelms me. I'm glad it's just not me. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, I appreciate it. I'm glad you asked it, Barry. Like For us, we did not make any calls on Mike. Um, we had calls from two teams that reached out to us about Mike. Um, we never made any phone calls about him. We were always, Mike was going to be here, and I think everyone made a big deal about him being on the field. Uh, but Mike's a competitive kid, you know. Uh, he's been challenged to do some things he you know, hadn't been asked to do before, and, and he stepped up, and we were talking about the other day how last couple of weeks he's, he's, he's been made some great strides in that area. So uh, for us, it was never about moving him or us trying to. Um, teams called asking because he's a good player. And, and um, so for us, you guys have heard me say it for years, you know, I'll always listen. It doesn't mean we're going to do anything because I, I think that's negligent if we don't because you never know what kind of deal someone's going to offer you on, on someone. Uh, oh, no, on. The coolest thing, too, is there, there was – um, noise that he's alluding to and one of the cooler parts of training camp for me in general um, I made a point to the team the other day was that you know what Mike worried about and all that about getting better at blocking and catching and he's there each and every day he he's doing one or two things um, uh, better to his standard of the way he wants his football to look, and that—that's—that's that's all you can ask for. That's a—that's um, a—that's a guy that teammates and um, coaches and everyone respect are the ones that can ignore the noise and just try to get better. I, uh, I heard what you player. said about Skyler, and it's a no-brainer, and you're not in the business of being stupid. He's a—he's a—you know, putting him on the 53, you could get somebody who could perhaps contribute on special teams right now. So do you keep Skyler because he can help you now, or do you think you can develop him and he can help you in the future? No, I, I think that uh, I I haven't heard of a, a, a good football team that their problem was they had too many good quarterbacks. They touched the they touched the ball every play. So um, that it, it's not about well what uh, you, you can go a lot of draft classes. And over a, a long period of time, and you'll be if you're holding your breath for um, a, a player uh, out of the seventh round to, to play like he did in the preseason, you're going to pass out. So, um, yeah, it, that that's why it's just because um, the you, you don't you don't just scoff and look the other way when you have. A player um, playing well at that position. Those are those are things that you'll, if you let those slip through your fingers, you'll end up regretting that forever. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, I just want to say appreciate all the stuff you guys said about Jason. Um, I'm glad you guys didn't ask me early because I told her I said if I got going, I probably would have broke down and left here. Um, but appreciate it. Um, he's such a good dude and. Um, I'm glad that he impacted all you guys' lives, and uh, we miss him here, and um, appreciate you guys just being good to Elizabeth and his family. So, all right, thank you.